Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Behind me is Blackfriars Bridge in London. So Blackfriars Bridge takes its name from the uh, monastery of the Blackfriars, which was on the north bank of the River Thames. I'm standing on the south bank of the Thames. So somewhere over about there was where Blackfriars Monastery was. So what is a friar? Well, a friar is a monk. So these uh, communities of religious Christian men live together. They're not allowed to uh, marry or have a girlfriend. They take vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, and they adopt the contemplative life, devote themselves to prayer and good works. So when a monk is called, a, is called brother, and in French that's frère, which, which is corrupted to friar in English, it's not because they fry food. Black friars were not necessarily black, it's because they wore black habit and black clothing. And they're so different orders of monks, whether they're Benedictines or Cistercians or Franciscans or whatever, they wear different habits. They, the, the order will say what colour the habit has to be. That's why the different people, orders known as black friars, white friars, grey friars, and so forth. And indeed in Oxford to this day, there's a, there's a religious house known as, as grey friars. But in 1536, King Henry VIII ordered the dissolution of the monasteries, and so religious houses throughout England, Wales, and Ireland were closed down. Within four years, the monks and nuns were all laicized, told you have to go out of here and take ordinary jobs, and the king is seizing the property of the monastery, um, and he's going to um, laicize that too, use it for his own purposes, and sell it off. And so the, the monastery they lived in has long since been demolished. But the area just north of the bridge is still known as Blackfriars, and indeed there's Blackfriars Station. So see, this Blackfriars Bridge here was, was uh, constructed in 1769, and it spans over 300 meters. Um, and you can see there's not great clearance, particularly high ships wouldn't be able to come through. Behind it is Blackfriars Rail Bridge, which was built in 1869. And indeed, Blackfriars Station is on the bridge. So um, it's a delightful spot by the River Thames. And there's something else I'd like to love to show. Look at this. Look at this lamppost, late 19th century after Basil Jump in the embankment. See that fish twirling around it. You know, you see the artwork, the care that's gone into that. It's not something which is solely utilitarian. And you see this figure a bit like Neptune representing old Father Thames. And then the, uh, the sticker, the walking stick of Aesculapius with the two entwined serpents to milk the fangs for anti-venom. But I digress. Anyhow, uh, Freemasons in this country, they swear this blood-curdling oath um, that if they ever reveal the secrets of the craft of Freemasonry, they should have their tongue torn out by the roots and be hanged below the high tide mark at Blackfriars Bridge. Well, um, in the late 70s, there was a scandal in the Vatican Bank. Um, so some people in the uh, Vatican were um, in cahoots with the mafia, were laundering money, embezzling uh, church funds and so forth. So um, in October, sorry, in August 17, 1978, John Paul I was um, elected Pope, um, Albo, Alba Luciani, and um, only a month later, he was found dead in bed. So he was a man in his early 60s. He was the picture of health for someone of that age. He scarcely drank, um, and uh, he was a healthy weight. He's very active, he's very upbeat, um, and was presumably not, not, not at risk of STDs. Um, and had a couple of medical examinations in the month of his papacy and was found to be fit, fit as a fiddle. So it was astonishing that he died so suddenly for no apparent reason. And some people say that he did not have foul, he did not have fair play, he was bumped off. I actually don't know any, any, any evidence of that. But anyway, John Paul II was elected in October um, 1978. So Banco Amorosiano was an Italian bank that was, was cooperating with the, the Vatican Bank. There was also the fund for, for religious works and uh, some of its money was going missing. So I'm not suggesting that most Catholic clergy were um, in cahoots with this, but a few of them, you know, very few, and connived with this, and a, and a few of the clergy, of course, were, were from mafia families. Um, so just when, when John Paul I was gonna look into this, um, he uh, suddenly and mysteriously died. Now, Roberto Calvi was a, a very senior figure at Banco Ambrosiani, and um, he was also a Freemason. Now, Catholics are not allowed to join the Freemasons. The Freemasons would say, yeah, we're welcome to join, but if you want to join the Freemasons, you must swear an oath to say that you believe in the Supreme Being. Whether that's the Hindu pantheon, or Jesus Christ, or Allah, or Satan, or anyone, you can join. They will never ask you. Simply affirm that you believe in the Supreme Being, whoever that is to you. Um, uh, now, the Catholic Church taught its children that you must never be a Freemason, and there were two papal bulls about this. A papal bull is a papal pronouncement. 
ex cathedra. It's because it's, it's bulla, as in lead in Latin. It's sealed with lead, the document, to prove that it was um, genuine, that you could authenticate it that way. Anyhow, um, in 1738, there was in Eminenti a papal bull denouncing the Freemasons and forbidding Catholics to do so. It would be a mortal sin to join the Freemasons. These papal bulls, they always take their, their name from the first few words, as in, like, from the highest, or in the highest, in Eminenti. And then it was Quo Gravoria in, um, in 1830, reaffirming this. But obviously there's a lot of double think and hypocrisy and a few high-ranking Catholic laity certainly joined the Freemasons. Mozart would be an example if you watch the magic flute, it is his, his send-up of Masonic ceremonial. But um, Roberto Calvi realized that the solids had really hit the fan, he was in trouble with the Mafia, he hadn't managed to keep their funds secret. They'd been making it from obviously extortion, robbery, prostitution, protection rackets, uh, increasingly drug dealing, you know, selling drugs from um, uh, the Far East across the United States in particular, the pizza connection. So uh, he had failed them and they were coming for him. So he uh, fled to London. Why? I suppose he didn't need to have a visa to get here, thought it was sufficiently far away. They'd never find him, but well, they did track him and whack him. I'm not sure how, because obviously this is before the internet. And if he was smart, he'd pay for a ticket with cash, which would be a completely normal thing to do in the 1980s. And there'd be no record of, of that or where he was staying. He checked into a hotel here in London, but somehow they found him. And uh, then one morning in 1982, his body was found suspended from the bridge, underneath the bridge, below the high tide mark, near the north end of the bridge. And he was uh, fully clad. He had uh, bricks in his pocket and indeed $14,000 worth of various currencies. Why on earth would you, would, you, would you leave so much money? Wouldn't you take it with you? The Mafia liked their cash, I think. And that was that. So um, it, it noticed that the, 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 paint, the bridge had been painted the day before, that section of the bridge. The paint would have been wet, but there was no paint on his shoes. So presumably he was killed somewhere else and carried there. If it was a way to commit suicide, what a strange way to do it. And why that particular place? Astonishing that he was killed at the exact place that Freemasons say you should be hanged from if you reveal the secrets of the craft. I don't think he actually divulged Masonic rituals, but the, 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 um, the uh, Mafia had obviously thought he had started to squeal. He was singing like a canary about um, the illegal financial transactions that he was a party to. So that's how he was killed. I don't know how these Mafia sleuths managed to uh, find him and kill him. And so uh, this, this murder remains unsolved to this day. In 2002, five men in Italy were charged with this murder, but they were all found not guilty. So we still don't know who killed Roberto Calvi um, somewhere not too far from, from Blackfriars Bridge. Carrying a corpse around London, even in the middle of the night, would not be the easiest thing to get away with. That is Blackfriars Bridge.